It's Ramsey Dewey over here in Shanghai, China. Welcome to another edition of Q&A with the Coach. Oh, my, what is this? It says, Kim Yaura, what is on my shirt? It's a couple of kitty cats doing jujitsu, and the one on top is putting the other one in a shoulder lock, even though kittens don't actually have shoulders. He's tearing up his shoulder joint. Isn't that cute? Instead of Kimura, it says Kim Yaura. Ha, ha, ha. Jokes really aren't funny when you have to explain them. As if dad jokes and puns ever were. Anyway, get your own at xmarshall.com and use my code RAMSEY10 for 10% off everything on the website. Once again, that's RAMSEY10 for 10% off at xmarshall.com. Now on with the questions. We have a question today from Superman's dad, Jor-El, the dead Kryptonian who sent Kal-El to Earth long, long ago. Kal-El says... No, Jor-El says... Hi, Ramsey. I love your videos, commentary, and insights. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. I have learned so much about MMA, combat sports, and even a thing or two about myself through processing your tips and perspectives. One thing that I wanted to ask you about that comes up occasionally in your videos is the concept of toxic masculinity. That's That comes up in my videos. That's, that's news to me. But let's continue. I'm confused by your takes on this. I have takes on this? Also news to me, but let's continue. I'm confused by your takes on this when it comes up because you seem to mock the concept in the way that many do, where one assumes that toxic masculinity implies that things considered traditionally masculine are bad, and that feminists and the woke folks are trying to ruin manhood. I do not think that this is the case. I'm confused. Because I see you as a man who well knows the difference between positive expressions of masculinity and what is referred to as toxic. My understanding is that toxic masculinity refers to negative behaviors that men and boys are taught as appropriate expressions of strength and manhood. Toxic males are simply bullies and cowards. Why don't we just call them that, then? If they're simply bullies and cowards, why do we have to co-opt the English language like Orwellian Newspeak from 1984 and make words mean things that words aren't supposed to mean? Toxic means it's poisonous, it's deadly, it's venomous, it'll kill you. Masculinity refers to literally half of the people on this planet. It is no coincidence that the people who co-opted those words put those together to trigger an emotional response from a huge percentage of the humans on this planet. But let's continue. Toxic males are simply bullies and cowards, men that I know you do not respect or would want to emulate. Toxic masculinity means that in order to be a real man, you have to dominate others you perceive as weaker or not real men, disrespecting women, insecure, hostility, etc. I know you're not that kind of guy, so could you please explain more about where you stand on the concept of toxic masculinity? I think you really have the right attitude about positive expressions of manhood, but maybe are misinformed on what the term toxic means in this context. Not trying to be preachy or condescending, my apologies if I come off that way. Thanks for all the wisdom. Keep it coming. All right, appreciate that question. And you might not appreciate what I'm about to say because I'm going to tear it apart a little bit. The expression toxic masculinity like many many other modern expressions that have found their way into the english language it's not a good expression it's not good it's a toxic expression if you want to call someone a jerk there's a word for that if you want to say that person is doing things that are not good there are words for that if you want to condemn men as a whole, intentionally or unintentionally, then you co-opt the English language to make it mean things that it's not supposed to mean. Again, it's Orwellian you speak, and I'm not a fan of it. I am not a fan at all of... Adulterating the English language. And you might say, well, Ramsey, haven't you ever read the, the growth and, and structure of the English language? Yeah, I have. It's a fascinating book. 
and for an old book with no pictures in it and lots and lots of boring words, it's a pretty not very boring book at all. It's pretty awesome. Highly recommend it. The Growth and Structure of the English Language. Forget who wrote it. But if you're not familiar with that, it, it, it is a history of the English language and how English has borrowed expressions from all kinds of different tongues from across this planet over the course of many years, and it has changed dramatically. And here I am. Sounds like old Ramsey is telling you English should stay the same forever and ever. Amen. No. What I'm telling you is that the people, the servants of Satan, who constructed this exact phrase, toxic masculinity, knew exactly what they were doing when they did it. They told you, oh, oh, well, what it really means is something nice that everybody can get behind. Except what the words they are employing actually mean, mean something very different. They are using this expression for the shock value. It's like those YouTubers who have... <laughs> Those very clickbaity thumbnails and the clickbait taglines to make you click on it, and then you find out it was all a lie. You didn't get what was advertised. And then you get mad. And, and then they tell you, well, why are you mad? You're the one who chose to click on it. You're the one who tricked me. You're the one who deceived me. You're the one who lied to me. Toxic masculinity, the expression itself... The verbiage itself is a lie. It is deceitful language intended to deceive, to beguile, and to misdirect the minds of men. You know what else is? The word feminism. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, but Ramsey, the feminists told me that feminism is something nice and wonderful that everybody should be able to get behind as long as they're a good person. <laughs> yeah, I bet they told you that. I bet they did. And if you follow the money chain, at the end of it are a bunch of warmongers like the rest of them. Servants of Satan, the lot of them. So, let's discuss, though, because I think you don't want to have a discussion about verbiage do you do you no you don't none of you do and you shouldn't you should not be drawn into fights and debates about the pedantic details of sophistry because that's what this is this is people who have no power trying to gain power over you through their use of sophistry it's, it's like that thing that little kids play, that little that game they play. I know something you don't know. And then you're like, well, what is it? I'm not going to tell you. And then you, you just become more eager. And suddenly they have the power in that relationship because you want to know the thing that they don't know, but they won't tell you. They don't have any power. They don't have any real secret. They just want it. And that is what happens with these co-opters of the English language who are making a real-life version of George Orwell's Orwellian New Speak that he wrote about in the, in the novel 1984. Is that a good book? Yeah, it's a book. And, man, it's, it's worth reading if you want to understand what's happening in the world today and has been happening for quite some time. The devil is making a concerted effort to wrap the world about with his chains while at the same time convincing convincing his followers that he's not even real. The greatest trick the devil ever pulled off was convincing the world he didn't exist. Yeah, toxic masculinity is a satanic expression. And here's why I say that. Here's the way Satan works. He will tell you mm, a lot of truth. Something that sounds really nice. But he mixes it with a lie. It's kind of like a poop sandwich. You get a sandwich. Maybe you're, 
you put some bread, some cheese, some mayonnaise, some cold cuts, whatever you like on a sandwich, and then you poop on it. And then you put another piece of bread on there so you can't see the poop. Satan's trying to feed you poop sandwiches, is what I'm saying. Everything's good in there except the poop, right? So, <laughs> that's how he works. That's how he gets you, man. And that's what's happening here with the adulteration of language. The words we use are extremely important. They are. The words you use about yourself, the words you use to define yourself... How many times has this happened to me as a coach where, where some struggling new guy in the gym is like, oh man, it's useless, I suck, after they fail a few times at doing something. It's happened a lot. And I'll cut them off and I will say, no, no, you don't suck. Don't let me ever hear you say that again, that you suck. Why? What is, what is the operative word there? It's I, I, me, me right? You're describing yourself, and when you describe yourself, those words that you use become a self-fulfilling prophecy. And when you say, I suck, guess what happens? There's your prophecy, and it's going to come true. So change the way you talk about yourself. Change the way you refer to yourself. Change the language you use. It matters. It matters a great deal. Words matter a great deal, man. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. One of the first parts of the Bible, right? Whether you believe the Bible or not, that's what it says. It's a story about this all-powerful being who speaks words and makes stuff happen. Why? Because those words are true. Let there be light. It's the truth, and so it is. That's how God operates. He speaks the truth the whole truth, nothing but the truth. And so it is, and it is good. Satan's different, though. He speaks words, but not all of them are true. And so what happens? It's not good. And it leads to not life everlasting, but destruction. So this might sound like a pedantic guy picking at straws here. You might think, well, no, no, it's a good expression to say toxic masculinity. Look, masculinity has been pathologized. It absolutely has been pathologized. It's, it's not even a, a new thing. It absolutely has. The 1800s. Something kind of strange happened. A lot of strange things happened in the 1800s, but do you know the story of John Harvey Kellogg? The inventor of Kellogg's cornflakes, the cold cereal guy? Yeah, that guy. Dr. John Harvey Kellogg. Well, he had a mission, and that mission was to get little kids to stop masturbating. And he did that through several means. One, the invention of cornflakes, which he believed would calm down the demons inside of little kids and get them to stop touching themselves. And two, mutilating their genitals. Both boys and girls. Because, in his own words, I shall paraphrase, the pain of the injuries caused to their genitals, would, they would start associating that pain with masturbation. And therefore, that would get them to stop. And so Kellogg popularized routine infant circumcision of boys and also girls. Back in the 90s, I think it was about 1996, a federal law was passed to protect girls in the United States from any form of genital mutilation, inasmuch as a prick of a pin, but not so little boys. And this so-called cure which was searching for a disease, persists today. It's a, it's a strange thing, because out of all the cultures in the world that practice circumcision, there are basically three main ones. Jews and Muslims, and they do it for religious reasons, and Americans, and they do it 
because they have been told that it's cleaner. They've been told that it's bad to allow a male to be intact. They've been told that masculinity is toxic literally and literally needs to be removed from off male bodies. The most highly enervated erogenous part of the male physique must be surgically amputated in order for a boy to be normal and accepted and clean in American society. What an absolute load of crap that is. And the reasons for this procedure have changed and changed and changed, but the procedure remains the same. It's mutilation of genitals, and it needs to stop. It ain't good, friends. What does that have to do with toxic masculinity? It's simply a form of pathologizing masculinity. John Harvey Kellogg, he pathologized masculinity. He also pathologized femininity. He was an equal opportunity hater. Man, he was. But the folks that followed him, not so much. They targeted specifically on men. Why? Because men are easy victims. Men are easy victims. What? What? But men are big, tough guys. They're strong. They got muscles. They can take it. No, men are easy victims. Because we're expected to take it and not fight back. And if we fight back, we're branded as toxic. We are pathologized. This isn't good, friends. It ain't good. So I hate this expression, toxic masculinity. I know what you think it means. I know what the people who taught it to you think it means. But it doesn't mean what you think it means. Imagine for a minute if we switched out the demographic of men with something else like, like race and switched toxic masculinity to toxic blackness and suddenly every black person in america would be up in arms like what the hell did you just say that's not okay come on man and you would say well no no you don't understand what we're really saying is that this term describes bad things that black people do and not black people themselves do you see how that sounds you see how incredibly horrible that sounds? Flip the script once in a while and see how it sounds. I mean, some people have tried to do this with the comeback of toxic femininity. And that's not good either, man. That's not good either. There are jerks who are men. There are jerks who are women. There are bad human behaviors. There are bad human behaviors that are more predominant in men. And do we need to call that toxic masculinity. No, we don't. Because we already have words for that. It's... It is comparable to swearing. Using profanity. It is. Let me explain. And let me explain why you don't hear me dropping F-bombs on this channel. Some people use the F word to mean almost anything. It's a verb, it's an adjective, it's a noun, it's an adverb, it's a participle, it's every part of speech. And when it means everything, it means nothing. That's, that's the point I'm getting across here. When, if your words mean anything you want them to, they don't mean anything at all. The English language, like every language out there, is rich and storied in history and etymology and has all of these wonderful words that already mean wonderful things. And if you're too stupid to pick up in a dictionary once in a while and look things up, if you're too stupid to pick up a book once in a while and read it and learn expressions and learn how to put these words into play, if you're too stupid to the point that you choose to be lazy, too lazy to do the basic things that they taught you to do in an English class in school, you know, read and write 
and look up words and celebrate language instead of trying to reinvent it into something that it isn't. I pity you. I pity you. Hmm. But back to the idea of profanity. I don't use profanity because it forces me to find better ways to say things. I don't use profanity because it's offensive. It's offensive to me. It's offensive to other people. Now, I'm not always offended when I hear it because someone might use the F word. They might say, F you, you jerk. And they mean that in an offensive manner, right? They're trying to offend that person. And then other people might use it more casually, like, oh, I was, I was uh, reading the effing newspaper the other day, and then uh, this effing guy said this. And, and they're not trying to offend anyone. They're, they're trying to make their language more colorful and exciting by dropping the F-bomb. But the reality is, eh, not really. Not really. The reason I started this YouTube channel about 16 years ago was to practice speaking, to practice the art of speaking and communicating vocally. And it's a great way to do that. And when we co-opt the language and expect everybody to follow suit, when we expect everybody to speak our new speak, to join on our Orwellian Newspeak propaganda train, or else. Or else they're not with the message, man. And so they need to be cancelled. Screw that. Screw that. No. No, I flatly refuse. That, that is the profanity of sophistry. It is profane sophistry. And I'm not having any of it. So, do I understand the difference between positive expressions of masculinity and things that jerks do? Yeah. You know who else does? Just about everybody on this planet. Let's say yes when we mean yes. Let's say no when we mean no. And, as Jesus said, anything is more or less than that, saying what you mean and meaning what you say, cometh of evil. Thanks for watching. Now get out there and train.